John chapter 4 verses 1 through 10. Gospel according to John chapter 4 verses 1 through 10. Now, when Jesus learned that the Pharisees had heard Jesus is making and baptizing more disciples than John, also it was not Jesus himself but his disciples who baptized, he left Judea and started back to Galilee. But he had to go through Samaria, so he came to a Samaritan city called Sikar, near the port of ground that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired out by his journey, was sitting by the well. It was about noon. A Samaritan woman came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. His disciples had gone to the city to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, How is it that you, a Jew, ask a drink of me, a woman of Samaria? Jews do not
On his way, he sent his disciples to get the food. Not even from 12, not even one disciple, not even one disciple was willing to stay back. Or maybe Jesus sent them to get food altogether so that they won't disturb to the meeting with this woman. Because she says to Jesus, saying, Jews and Samaritans will not mingle. They will not talk. And how can you ask for water? Jesus was thirsty. It makes me question when Jesus says in John chapter 7, let anyone who is thirsty come to me and let the one who believes in me drink. Similarly, in Matthew chapter 11 verse 28, he says, come to me all you who are weary and are carrying heavy burden, I will give you rest. It is surprising to know that Jesus is tired and weary because he says whoever is thirsty I am willing to give water whoever is tired I am willing to give you rest but here Jesus is tired and weary sometimes we may look into this thing saying see Jesus is tired and he wants water but he promises that woman that he will give a water living water that so that she will never get thirsty. It's like oxymoron, contradicting to the statement and action. But Jesus says to that woman to point out the need for her spiritual thirst. There is a thirst for her. So to fulfill that thirst, Jesus was promising her, calling her and asking her for water. Many times Jesus do something for our own good but many a times we forget the need we face we have and look into other direction there is a need god is willing to satisfy the need both of the samaritan women and jesus both of them had a need they both wanted water jesus wanted to quench his thirst but whereas the Samaritan woman wanted water for her soul to flourish and prosper. Many ideas surround that woman's condition and stature, but we, no, no, we need not to go into it. But here Jesus is willing to give a gift. Are we able to see the gift which God is willing to give us? So. Both of them are in need. Jesus is willing. Here, one more, one another thing we can see that Jesus, to meet this woman, to introduce her to the living water, to make her life transform, he identified himself with that woman that she is thirsty as well as he. He also wanted water and she also in need. So that through identifying, they can find a common ground. God is searching for the common ground and he is approaching every one of us through the commonity, common, common, common ground. Here the woman was asking Jesus, how can it be you are a Jew? Verse 9 says in this way, The Samaritan woman said to him, How is it that you, a Jew, ask a drink of me, a woman of Samaria? Jews do not share things in common with Samaritans. So, how is it possible? What is the need for this to happen? Jesus wanted to fulfill her need and meet her in that well to transform
lose track of the encounter God is willing. In Luke chapter 1 verse 34, there a woman was asking the angel Gabriel, saying, How can this be? So Mary was asking the angel Gabriel. Likewise, here Samaritan woman was asking Jesus, How can you say that you will give a living water? You don't have a bucket. You don't have anything to get water. The well is deep. In John chapter 4, verse, 1 John chapter 4, verse 4 says, One who is in you is greater than he, one who is in this world. He can fulfill the need. Even though he identified himself with our struggle and our persecution or our needs, he can identify himself with all our problems. Along with that, he is able to win over it because he is greater than the one who is in this world. Likewise, when the Gabriel answers Mary, Mary, he says, for nothing will be impossible with God. So God can do whatever is in need and he can satisfy the needs of the people. So when we meet God, when we encounter God, when we fulfill the needs what God requires from us, when we embrace, when we are ready to embrace the gift which he is willing to give, he is ready to fulfill our needs by giving us the living water. In John chapter 4, we can see that verse 10 says, If you knew the gift of God, and who is it that is saying to you, Give me a drink, you, have, you would have asked him, and he would have given him, given you living water. So the gift is ready. Many times when I read this verse, we pray every day morning, we pray to God, thanking him or her, thanking the parents, saying, thank you for giving us life, thank you for giving us shelter, thank you for giving us food, thank you for giving us protection. We pray for many things. But here, Jesus is saying, when you ask for it, you will get the living water. And the result was, as soon as this woman received the living water, the spring started and that reached the Samaritan town and many have transformed their lives. So there is a need for the living water. When, when I was hearing a Muslim apologist speech in YouTube, he was asking the audience, who are many, many are Christians, saying, he was an apologist, Muslim apologist, saying, he was asking the audience, Jesus never said that he is God. Jesus never asked anyone to worship him. Jesus asked no one to come to him. That is, in God leave me. But when I read this, Jesus, he himself says to that woman, if you knew the gift of God, God's gift, and knew who it is asking you water. That is, God, he himself, identifying himself with God, and he says, if you ask, I will give you the living water. That water gives the everlasting life and peace. Many a times, churches preach on promises of God. But in John chapter, 1 John chapter 2, verse 25 says, this is what he has promised us, eternal life. The promise which God is willing to share to us, share with us, is eternal life, not the earthly possession, not the earthly, not the earthly luxurious things, but eternal life. Are we ready to embrace the gift which he is willing to give? And all the diversifying opinions which we have, 
we have many how can this be happen how can this happen how is it possible it's too hard it can never happen it won't bulge but many a times we forget we need to avoid the diversifying opinions which covers which around us which are around us and we need to embrace god's gift with faith and move forward may the good lord help us reach the gift of god and identify with him and get be transformed thank you amen
Let us pray. Everlasting God, thank you for guiding our step always on your path. Your word says that the earth is yours and everything in it. The world and all its people too belong to you without any discrimination and dis differences. We recognize and acknowledge that our life and everything we have belongs, we have belongs to you. Also Lord, your word says that we will find joy in offering our time, talents and money to meet the needs of our of others, help us to be able to continue to give freely. Well. Now, as a class, we would like to pay tribute to our late brother Tracy Gibson Paul by showing you a short video clip of his life spent here in Gurukul. After which, I would like to request each and every one of you to stand together for a one minute silence. Shall we all stand together for one minute? Thank you. You may take your seat now. Thank you. Let us have a time of intercession. God of mercy and compassion, of grace and reconciliation, pour your power upon all your children in India. Let hatred be turned into love, 
fear to trust, despair to hope, oppression to freedom, occupation to liberation, that violent encounters may be replaced by loving embraces and peace and justice could be experienced by all. God in your mercy. We bring the administrators, principal, professors, the supporting staff, and maintenance staff of GLTC before you. In their vocation as educators, they continue the teaching ministry of Christ. We pray for your blessings over their lives, their works, their livelihood, and their families. Guide them with your wisdom. May they be empowered by your Holy Spirit to see the needs of their students and to inspire those under their care. God, in your mercy. We bring our parents, guardians, and caregivers of our students before you. They are faced with unprecedented challenges. They have to make decisions that require your wisdom, understanding, and insight. When they feel overwhelmed, be present in their life. May they never feel alone and abandoned. Strengthen them from within so that they might be a source of strength, confidence, and hope for their children. God, in your mercy. Loving God, we thank you for all who will be graduating this time of the year. You have blessed us during our years in GLTC with wisdom, friendships, and skills. You continue to challenge us to make this world a better place because of the education. Give us faith and a sense of purpose in our next steps. Show us how to serve others in effective ways. And may we always be aware in everything that we do. We'll find fulfillment in doing your will, that you will be with us always. God, in your mercy. God, we have come to the end of this academic year. We look back at the struggles we met and we give thanks from the depth of our heart for the marvelous things you have done in each one of our lives. We thank you that you have revealed, revealed your love to us today. We invite you to send us out from here in the power of the Holy Spirit. Lord, thank you that we are a family in Christ. Help us to share your love and legacy with everyone that we encounter. May we lavish Christ's abounding goodness upon our families, friends, and colleagues. We thank you for choosing us and molding us to bring your kingdom here on earth. Let everything we do be in line with your word. Be with us as we leave this place and grant us peace in our hearts. In Jesus' name, we believe and pray. Amen. Let us all say the Lord's Prayer together. Our God in heaven and earth, hallowed be your name. Your reign come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the reign, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Let us receive the benediction. May the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, love of God, and sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Thank you. Thank you.